have Tom Peacock, who is the CEO and co-founder of Seven Cleases. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio, Tom. Thank you for having me today. So I'm personally very excited to have you today, and there are many reasons for it, right? I mean, I read in the newspapers, I read in the social media about all of these really innocent marine life getting strangled in plastic bags, and you know, when when kind of scientists are looking at their bodies, they find a lot of plastic in their gut as well, um, and it really breaks my heart to kind of see what's happening to these marine life and the fact that they are facing the consequences of things that they haven't even done. Yeah. So when I kind of figured out that you are doing such an Incredible things about plastic uh, pollution. I thought it would be really exciting to have you in our studio, and have a chat around how you are trying to solve the problems around um, plastic pollution. So, what's your story? What got you excited about plastic pollution, and how did you get here? Yeah, so I think it's fair to say that I'm an accidental environmentalist. You know, I wasn't always this way. I moved to Singapore in 2013, actually, having done the traditional go to university, do business. Uh, get into finance of all things, and um, you know, living in Singapore offers a lot of kind of opportunity to travel the region quite a lot. And I'm half Malaysian myself, okay. and I've been coming to Asia a long a lot throughout my uh, throughout my childhood. And I think something that I've always seen and it just became more prolific was wherever you go, if you get off the beaten track, you know, if you become a bit of an adventurer on your holiday, there is just plastic so pollution much, yes. everywhere. And it wasn't for a long time that I just didn't really register it. You know, you see it, but you don't really see it. You just you're you're kind of you're so used to it. It's a normal sight that it doesn't really get you upset, which is totally wrong. But there was one particularly uh, eye-opening trip to a uh, an island in the South Andaman Sea in Thailand called Koh Lipe. Now this place is picture perfect, beautiful. It is unbelievable. And my wife and I were on the beach all day long. We decided to go back the next day because it was just so nice. And the beach that we were on the day before, sunbathing and enjoying ourselves, was literally a, a carpet of plastic. It was the, it must have been a combination of a high tide and onshore wind and quite literally just a patch of floating plastic, half of which was still in the ocean, um, that had deposited on this beach. Suddenly the very picture-perfect beach actually became like a storehouse of all the plastic. Quite literally. And for me, it was like, it was like the hammer. You know, it just it brought it all home. And I decided to come back to Singapore and carry on with my job, of course. I was never meant to quit finance and just start connecting people to the issue of ocean plastic pollution through beach cleanup events. You know, they're a great educative opportunity and things quickly grew. And before you knew it, I was kind of head over heels in pa with passion for ocean plastic pollution, which sounds bizarre. And finding a way, any way possible to, to really dedicate my life to, to this issue. This is really inspiring and suddenly, you know, like one holiday or one observation in the environment can change your perspective about so many things. And before you know it, you got like just so passionate and excited about it. So how did you start the company? I mean, what was the trigger to kind of move from doing a passion project and evangelizing about plastic pollution to actually starting a business? You know, it's, it's actually really important because coming from finance, I understood business. I, I know that things have a P&L at the end of the day doesn't matter how good something is for the world. If it's not financially sustainable, then it's not sustainable, period. And for me, I realized quite quickly that the scale of the issue is gargantuan. It's so big that simply setting up an NGO and receiving donations was never going to get me to where I wanted to be, which was essentially having a, a sizable impact on the issue itself. So I knew we had to be a business. Now, I was already a huge fan of the structures like social enterprises. You know, it's for profit, but it's for good. It's the perfect business in, in my eyes. And I tried to kind of think of different ways we could apply this to ocean plastic pollution and actually build a profitable business that only kind of generates a positive outcome on, on, on the situation. And that really read, led me down a bit of a rabbit hole in kind of mid 2018 of plastic offsetting. Now, back then, nobody knew what plastic offsetting oh, yeah. was. No one was talking about it. Nowadays, I think if you fast forward to today, um, so many kind of industry leaders have done opinion pieces on plastic offsetting. There's a lot more awareness now. There's so much more awareness. You know, it's starting to become a conversation, which is nice. We realized that if we could collect plastic from the natural environment, use that to raise money through selling that action as a plastic offset, generate more income to actually then take it to a whole different level and build onshore infrastructure in coastal communities, that we could stop millions of kilos of plastic 
in a very short amount of time, and it can all be funded by this third party funding mechanism, plastic offsetting. So I kind of set out on my jolly way, uh, tried to speak to everybody I could, and, uh, and yeah, people just didn't get it. And I'm, I'm just blown away by your business model, right? Because a lot of times when I'm thinking of sustainable solutions led startups, I'm thinking that, okay, how are they going to make money? You know, because a lot of organizations and companies are still thinking of sustainability as a nice to have thing rather than as a core business model. And you as a startup has actually created an entire business model around this is absolutely inspiring for a lot of startups who are looking at getting into uh, this space. Just one more question I have in the same space. So when you are thinking about profitability, how do you determine profitability for your business? Our cost of operation is multi multiple times higher than our competitors at the moment. And because of that, our credits are multiple times more expensive. But once we've sat down and had the conversation with our clients about why we're more expensive, they're actually fine with it. And even then we have to build in a profit margin as well because it's great having one project in Indonesia, one project in Vietnam and Malaysia, but we've set ourselves the goal to recover 10,000 tons of ocean plastic that doesn't even count the plastic we're going to divert wow, from the ocean. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and be active in the seven top plastic polluting countries by 2025. So That's ambitious. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, some might say too ambitious, but we're doing okay for now. I'm pretty happy with where we are. So tell me a little bit more on your personal front, right? I mean, you have this aggressive goal. You are incredibly passionate about what you do. I'm sure in your journey when you started off and where you are today, you would have had a variety of high and low moments. Tell us a little bit more about when it all came crashing, when you thought, okay, this is probably not going to be a viable business. And, and I'm sure that you probably might have had that thought at some point. Um, what was that moment and how did you kind of like recuperate from there and how did you move forward? It's a great question, actually. And, you know, this is my first time being an entrepreneur. The first time it didn't go well, that did come crashing down, but um, that's, that's less important. It was a lot of good lessons in that. Really what I've struggled with, and one thing that I think a lot of entrepreneurs must struggle with, um, particularly with Seven Clean Seas since I've started, since we've kind of transitioned from this thing that was more passion to like a hardcore startup, like working all the hours, all the days of every week, um, was the illegitimate fear that sometimes you just wake up on the wrong side of bed and you just doubt yourself. It's just the illegitimate doubt, like why, what am I doing? What have I quit my job for? What have I dedicated my life towards? How is this gonna make money? How am I gonna have a good life off this? Is it even gonna succeed at what I'm trying to do? And they have been the most difficult days and you probably get one every two or three weeks, I think, when you're busy. And they're the most difficult days because you've got to be able to try and reset because you're sat there just doubt washing all over you on, on, on your idea. And for me, it's a question of just getting back to basics, you know, sitting down and just trying to write out, okay, what have we achieved so far? Who are our clients? What are we going to achieve? And when you put everything down on a piece of paper, it actually, it makes you feel a lot more confident about, about it again. So tell me this, like a lot of your projects are in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Do you intend to expand globally? And um, how can companies like Microsoft help you? I'm looking forward to expanding globally. I'm looking forward to working continually with Microsoft and, um, and, and other players in the market as well. Because like you say, it's a, we need an ecosystem level approach because the problem is just too big. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so grateful to have you today, Tom. Really appreciate it. I mean... Before you go, any advice for our audience based on your own experiences and where you see yourself today and in years to come? On a personal level, I think it's fair to say that even if you are not kind of happy in your job and you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to do something that's good for the world, it's like you don't have to make that step straight away. You know, start something on the side. You don't even have to have a business model behind it at first. The most important thing is that other people like it and you build a community. When you build a community and it's doing something good, business opportunities will arise. We actually do interact with the, um, with the, with the wider public community, you know. You can buy sustainably sourced products and packaged products on our website, which actually remove a month's worth of plastic on your behalf. So you can be plastic neutral yourself whilst looking good and actually, you know, shopping sustainably and consciously. So check out 7
And if you've got any questions, just email us, hello at sevencleanseas.com. What makes you laugh the most? Making mistakes. What was the last movie you went to? Jumanji. Okay. What would you sing at karaoke night? Hotel California. Okay, not bad. What did you want to be when you were younger? Zoologist. Do you love or hate surprises? Love surprises. Great. Thank you so much, Tom. It was wonderful to know you and have you on the show and look forward to see and hear your stories again. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Thanks.